simple di distance is what we will normally consider distance is we took a ruler on our GIS and then measured the distance. The primary tool for doing distance calculations is called NEAR. Um, there are two versions, there is a one that's called NEAR and one that's called NEAR as table. And we can, if I switch to ArcMap, we will find these down in our um, toolboxes. So for here under analysis tools and we have our proximity and we have our near and we have this one create near table. We'll be talking about the near which is a simple version of it. And what near does is that it takes for any, in our case we'll be using it for addresses, so we'll be looking at what is the distance, what is the shortest distance to an R object. That R object can be a road, a park as a polygon, a line as a road, or it can be an R point as a station. In addition to calculating the distance, it also calculates the intersection point, so where does it touch the road, where is the nearest location on the road, or the nearest location on the park, and it will also calculate the direction to go to get the, to the short, the shortest direction. So which way to go with the compass bearing to follow to get to the point. So if you look at the data set that we're using, <coughs> I have a created folder here called distance demo and in it I have our selection uh, file database that we've been using before. I've added some uh, land mass and I've also changed uh, the coordinate system of the train stations to match our coordinate systems. But apart from that this is the same selection database that has been used in other videos. So what we would like to do is that we would like to know how far is there from any given address to a station. So we've got our train stations and we've got our address. We've got two addresses, remember, we have our addresses and we have these Adgangsadresse, that's called in Danish, so the street address. So this is, that in, this, in here we have a point for each floor, so there'll be on third floor to the left, there'll be a address point here. This one only has the street door. So we'll use this one because we are not interested in how many floors we have to move up and down. So we just have our street address. I'll close my identifier tool here for a moment. So this is our data set. And of course there's lots and lots and lots of addresses. We're in the Copenhagen region. And if I switch to my table of contents, I can move my stations up. And I think I'll need to make my stations a bit more visible. So there'll be something like this and red and somewhat bigger. So hopefully we now can see the stations on top of our address layer. So if we want to use the near to, well, we might as well be correct and start out by creating a toolbox and doing everything as a model. So I'll just start out in my folder here and I'll say new and I'll say toolbox and I'll call it distance demo demo and in that I'll start creating a new model. So, in this first model, I'm interested in calculating using the near tool to find the distance and direction from the address points to the stations. So I might as well draw, drag in my address and my train stations. And go down and find the near tool. Of course, I could do a search 
tager den her fra nede, og I can just bare stop because we already had before, and got the near like that. So, we have our, see have, we have two things, we have inputs and near. Inputs is the one that we'll be looking from, and near is the ones that we are looking to. So, but what will happen now is that it will calculate these near information and to these features and I can uh, also ask it to calculate the location and the angle to the, di to the nearest object. So not only calculate the distance but also the x and y coordinate or where it touches doesn't really matter in this situation because they will always be the coordinates of the station and the angle but just to show it and here you can see I've got a planner or I could use the round of the geodesic um, distance but we'll work with the planner so our tool is ready to run before we run the tool you might just consider what don't I give a output file I mean, it says in here in the tool thing, there's no output field. No. That's because it's one of these tools that modify its input data. So it's not creating a new layer. What it's doing is it goes into addresses and writes new attributes into this address. Therefore, you can also see that it has as its output address address 2, which is just another representation of the same file. So just be aware of this little subtlety of the tool here. So I'll just save my model and run it. And this tool shouldn't take long to run. So it has now done it. And we can uh, close our tool. Yep. And we can now go in and look at our addresses attribute table of it. And what you will see is that it now has a near FID, which is the feature ID of the near station. It has a distance to it, it has the coordinates, and all of those that share the same FID also share the same coordinates. And it has an angle to the station. If I um, want to visualize this, I'll be assuming a bit. So I'll just zoom in on this area. So, here we have stations, and that's one up this there in the corner. If I now want to visualize this information from the near table, I can go in and say properties, and go in and say I want to work with quantities, and I want to do gradiated symbols, and I'll do it based on the distance, and it will say, that, oh, there's lots here. Um, I can uh, change if it, this warning here is based on how many parts there is. There is a max that it look through. And I can just go in on a sample and increase that max. And if you sit, note that it has this drop down here and the strange tail. If I change this, it will now update the data so it has all of the parts included. Um, so this is the distance. Um, a circle is not very good for indicating directions. So I'll just change, um, I think I'm doing some here, and it's a template, and I'll change it. I know that there is a symbol called arrow. So I'll just search for arrow, and that will give me an arrow which has zero up. And now I have different sizes of arrows depending on my diff my distance. And if I now go down under this advanced, I can say rotation and say that it has to be rotated based on its direction, its angle. Um, this is a compass bearing from it, so um, it's a bit peculiar, but we'll need to set this one over here. So we now have a compass bay like that, and okay. So now 
we can see that all our arrows are pointing towards the nearest station. Um, they are a bit small. But increase the size of these smaller ones here. So we can see them. So we can see that they are all pointing towards this station here. So, that is the near tool. It modifies our attribute table of our. So, what the near tool does is that it goes in and modifies our input feature. So, it includes these near FID, that's the nearest station in this case, the distance to it, the location of the nearest. It's not really relevant when it's points, but if it are polygons or roads, this might be really relevant. And then the angle to it that I used in order to do my symbology, where I drew the arrow to point towards the nearest station.